name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Thank you for making the extra effort to be here today. I just thought it was very important that we, because Jesus is the reason why we gather in the first place. May he always be the main reason why we believe. As we come before the Lord, we call upon his mercy. Lord Jesus, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be the servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life and Father Anthony is assigned also to be the chaplain at the College of Westminster. And he was the son of 
parish I was at before, St. John of Paul. He comes from there, and I see his parents are here. If they would stand, and we can say thank you for your presence. And ushers, make sure you give them envelopes. I'm sure we'll see a lot of them. And that's a good thing. Did you hear the gospel today? It's a perfect gospel for this weekend. Because we find James and John asking Jesus for something. And we all tend to do that. We're, we're always asking for something. But notice that James and John are asking for something very self-centered. It's all about them. Yet Jesus comes as one who offers everything for our sake. And it challenges us, as he challenged them, to consider what am I willing to sacrifice for Christ's sake, for our faith, for the sake of passing that faith on to the next generation. How many of you have children, great-grandchildren, grandchildren, these nephews, around the age of four or two? How many of you? Oh, most of you do. Some family members. Well, I have two over here. My little nephew, Patrick, who's four, and my little niece, Mary Alice, who's two. Now, of course, they get showered with gifts. And have you had this experience? When, when you give a child of that age a gift, as I have, they open it up, they look at the gift, and then they play with the box. <laughs> you ever have that happen? I mean, he does it all the time. And I think I should have just given him an empty box. Because that's what he really likes. Well, God's children tend to do the same thing. We get so enamored with the box that we forget about the gift inside the box. And that gift is God himself. In the Eucharist, in the sacraments we celebrate. When I was here before at YDC, I was blessed to be part group that built an interfaith chapel right in the middle of YDC. So we celebrated the sacraments there with those inmates. And now YDC is closed. But everything that happened under the roof of that little chapel remains. Because it's eternal. But the building it's just a building. It's like our flesh. It will come to dust. I come from a parish where I spent 16 years adding on property and then a church. But well, we had to build a Protestant church in order to get the property to build our church on. Then we built a 1,500 seat church. And it's gorgeous. And I hope you all see it someday. Beautiful stained glass windows that came from another church that was closed. As well as the bell and the bell tower, over 100 years old, came from a closed church. The Stations of the Cross. The Tabernacle. So many things that make this present day church beautiful came from other churches that died. Because there's a dying and a rising. And the people from those other churches come there and they're so grateful because it lives on. But the day will come when St. John and Paul, that church, will be dust, just like our bodies will be dust. But everything that takes place under that roof, that is what's important. And that is what is eternal. And that's what lasts forever. So the Lord challenges you and me to detach from what is material and attach to what is spiritual. There's a fire of faith in Lawrence County. And that fire is being threatened. And it's your responsibility and ours to keep that flame alive. My mother and Pooch Allegro, who used to help me with those retreats in YPC, 
always said, you have to keep the main thing, the main thing. And what's the main thing for a Catholic parish? Right, say it, Jesus. Our faith in Jesus and passing that faith on to the next generation. That's our ultimate goal. I have a goal for you. There were six people. It should have been seven because we have seven parishes, seven stars, seven sunflowers. But there's only six people in this poem, but you'll get the point. There's a bonfire keeping them alive. And every single one of these people have something to contribute to the fire. But for sinful reasons, they hold their stick back. Six humans trapped by happenstance in dark and bitter coal. Each one possessed a stick of wood, or so the story's told. Their dying fire in need of logs, one woman held hers back. For on the faces around the fire, she noticed one was black. The next one looking across the way saw one not of his church and could not bring himself to give the fire his stick of birch. The third one sat in tattered clothes and gave his coat a hitch. Why should my log be used to aid the idle rich? The rich man just sat back and thought of the wealth he had in store and how he could keep what he had earned from the lazy, shiftless poor. The black man's face bespoke revenge <coughs> as the fire passed from his eyes. For all he could see in his stick of wood was a chance to spite the white. The last man in this forlorn group did not expect for gain. Giving only to those who gave was how he played the game. Six logs held tight in death's still hands was proof of human sin. They did not die from the cold without. They died from the cold within. Within us is the tendency, like James and John, to think about me. What I want. I want this church. I want this time for mass. I want it in this place. I want, I want, I want. <laughs> the day will come when a community this size will have one place. Now you have some young guys up here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one. <laughs> so you get my point. You get my point. This fire that is the Catholic faith in Lawrence County needs our sacrifice to keep burning. And we're all responsible, not just me, not just these guys. All of us are responsible to pass that faith on to the next generation. And we can't do it alone. That's why we've called you all together here. We're one Catholic family. So we have to decide now to work together. Keep that flame alive. And I hope you will be willing to do your part. As we are willing to do our part. Keep Jesus the main thing. And to pass him on for the next generation. So, on this first weekend, let us renew our baptismal promises. Please stand. Do you reject Satan? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Amen. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, crucified, died, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty? Amen.
Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life of the last? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. And we're proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you were willing to give your all for us. For the forgiveness of our sins and the gift of everlasting life. You left yourself for us in this holy universe. May each and every one of us be willing to make our own sacrifice for you. So that you remain forever our one and only. And we'll pass you on to the next generation. As we place before you our cares and concerns. Please respond. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, our bishops, priests, deacons, and all who lead our communities of faith, may they be strengthened by God's love and mercy in their lives of service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our new clergy team, as they begin their new assignments, may the Holy Spirit continue to be their guide as they serve our faith community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our For the faithful of our parish ruby, that we may grow in discipleship through the grace of the Holy Spirit, serving Christ as we serve one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who exercise authority in our world, may they be blessed with the virtues of wisdom and compassion in their governance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, may they experience the healing presence of the Lord through the loving presence and care of others. <coughs> we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve us in the military, law enforcement, and first responders, that they be kept from harm as they serve us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, permanent diaconate, and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, for members of our families, friends, and benefactors, for all who will die this day, may they come to experience the justifying love and mercy of Christ, the suffering servant. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now let us pray our new parish prayer located on the bookmarker of your worship day. Lord Jesus, you call us
the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
because we want to welcome our young people and know how much we desire them to be with us, I'd like to start a new tradition which we had at my former parish, and that is blessing all the little ones who have not yet received First Holy Communion. So any little one that is younger than the age of First Holy Communion, I invite you to please come down. Father, Son, and the Holy 